The picture of distress was shocking indeed. They had consumed two children of Jacob Donner. Mrs. Graves' body was lying there with almost all the flesh cut away from her arms and limbs. Her breasts were cut off and her heart and liver taken out. Her little child, about 13 months old, sat at her side, one arm upon the body of its mangled mother, sobbing bitterly, cried, Ma, Ma, Ma. When the third relief party reached the lake, only seven emigrants remained alive. Tampson Donner was among them, still remarkably strong for all she'd been through. George, who was dying, begged her to leave. Tamson refused. She would not let her husband die alone. The fourth relief party was delayed one full month by the ninth and final blizzard of what was the worst winter ever recorded in the Sierra Nevada mountains. They found Louis Kiesberg in his cabin, delirious, surrounded by the half-eaten dead. No one else was alive. Tampson Donner's body was never found. Kiesberg confessed to eating her remains. On April 21st, the last relief party left the lake. On April 25th, they reached Bear Valley. All of the survivors of the Donner Party had now come out of the mountains. It had been one year almost to the day since the Donners and the Reeds had left their homes in Springfield, Illinois. It was long after dark when we got to Johnson's Ranch. So the first time I saw it was early in the morning. The weather was fine. The ground was covered with green grass. The birds were singing from the tops of the trees, and the journey was over. I could scarcely believe that I was alive. The scene that I saw that morning seems to be photographed on my mind. Most of the incidents are gone from memory, but I can always see the camp near Johnson's Ranch. John Breen. California, May 16th, 1847. My dear cousin, I take this opportunity to write to you to let you know that we are all well at present. I'm going to write to you about our troubles in getting to California. We had good luck till we come to Big Sandy. We had to stay in the California mountains all winter without Pa. We had not the first thing to eat. Of the 87 men, women, and children in the Donner Party, 46 survived. 41 died. Five women, 14 children, and 22 men, counting John Sutter's Indians, Lewis and Salvador, who had risked their lives to save the immigrants. Two-thirds of the women and children made it through. Two-thirds of the men perished. Of all the families, the Donners suffered the most. All four adults and four of the children died. All of the Reeds survived. So did all of the Breens.
The story of the Donner disaster quickly spread across the country. Newspapers printed every word of all the letters and diaries, along with wild tales of men and women who had gotten to enjoy eating human flesh. Emigration to California fell off sharply, and Hastings' cutoff was all but abandoned. Then, in January 1848, gold was discovered in John Sutter's Creek. By late 1849, more than 100,000 people had rushed to California to dig and sift near the streams and canyons where the Donner Party had suffered so much. In 1850, California entered the Union as the 31st state. Year by year, traffic over what was now called Donner Pass increased. The lake became a tourist attraction and a favorite vacation spot year-round. The terrible ordeals of the Donner Party passed into history and legend. Relics from the camps, bits of china, buttons and nails, wood shavings from the cabins, became popular souvenirs. Almost a century later, trees the emigrants had shorn off at snow level still stood as a vivid reminder of the fierce winter of 1846. Oh, it's got everything. It's a Greek tragedy. It's a great test of, of human character. Some people came through it heroically. And some of the people in that party were far from heroes and they got worse as the, as the conditions got worse. So that the, it was as if the sheep and the goats, the, the blessed and the unblessed, sorted themselves out against a, a background of, of terrible hardship and tragedy. Most of the men, women, and children of the Donner Party were rapidly absorbed into the population of California. Mary Graves, survivor of the Forlorn Hope, was married in May, before the snows had even melted. The Breens settled in San Juan Batista, where Patrick became a prominent rancher. Alone among the survivors, Lewis Kiesberg spoke openly of eating human flesh and was reviled as a man-eater and ghoul. During the gold rush, he made his fortune and in 1851 opened a restaurant in Sacramento. George and Tamson Donner's orphaned children were soon split up. Eliza and Georgia were adopted by a Swiss couple who lived near Sutter's Fort. My dear cousin, we are all very well pleased with California. It is a beautiful country. It ought to be a beautiful country to pay us for our trouble getting there. Tell Henrietta if she wants to get married to come to California. She can get a Spaniard any time. To her father's dismay, Virginia Reed kept the vow she'd made in the cabin by the lake and converted to Catholicism. When eight-year-old Patty Reed arrived in California, she pulled from her ragged dress a little bundle. In it was a lock of her grandmother's hair and a tiny doll she had carried with her all the way from Springfield. She died in 1931 at the age of 93. James Reed never spoke in public of the killing of John Snyder. He settled his family in San Jose, made money in real estate and gold, and became one of the town's leading citizens. Margaret Reed's sick headaches disappeared and never returned. 